Purposeful restoration for me, it encompasses the economical side, the preservation, as well as the tourism side of restoration. When you restore, you restore not only the environment, but the people, because the people affect the environment. So that in turn affects what we're doing because we're restoring hope in them and restoring the ecosystem. As a state employee, I do feel like we are tasked with being prudent with every dollar that comes through the state of Mississippi. Our payments come in over 15 years, so it's not like we have $2.1 billion sitting in our checking account to go do purposeful restoration. And so, from my perspective, purposeful restoration is taking all of those things into consideration, including the payment schedule and what our limitations of funds are to implement projects, and implement projects in segments in a way that they complement one another. A great example of restoration projects complementing one another can be seen through a series of projects around St. Louis Bay. The first project is the Nature Conservancy Oyster Reef. This 20-acre reef built with hard structure cultch is in a non-harvestable zone and will serve as a spawning reef for oyster spat production. Hard structure like cultch is critical because it serves as attachment points for oyster production. The second project is a subtital reef near the mouth of the Wolf River. MDEQ constructed 1,600 feet of breakwaters using oyster rings. This was the first time we used this method of restoration in Mississippi. There are cast concrete rings that stack and, and make the different kind of surface area for the oysters to grow on. So they hadn't been used in Mississippi, and we wanted to see, well, do they perform better than what we traditionally use for oyster reef or break water. That was a good opportunity. The, these monies, while we want them to, to restore the coast, we also have the opportunity to do things like that. Where the way we've always done things, maybe there's a better way. And we have the opportunity and the resources to try things that are out there that are being used in other parts of the country that have never been used here before. They've been installed now and the monitoring period will start and we'll see how they perform compared to other breakwater material. Project three, the Wolf River Marsh creation and Project 4, the Diamond Head Dredge Project, are linked together. Dredge material from the Diamond Head Canal will be taken to the Wolf River site. This dredge material will be used to create about 26 acres of marsh. Additionally, in St. Louis Bay, our fifth project is a land acquisition. This acquisition is part of a larger, coastwide effort to conserve land. MDEQ, in partnership with the Department of Marine Resources, acquires properties for the restoration opportunities that they provide. Our final project in the suite of projects is the creation of the St. Louis Living Shoreline. This living shoreline will protect the southwest corner of the marsh in St. Louis Bay. This project is in the design and engineering phase. Our MDEQ team is dedicated to being good stewards of the state's money while putting together purposeful restoration across the coast. We've heard from our federal partners time and time again that Mississippi is out in front of all of the other coastal states when it comes to actually drawing down funds and putting them in the ground. Um, so, you know, I really think we're hitting our stride here and um, I think things are only gonna get better. We want you to know that when you get ready to talk about the coast and that people come and visit, that it's gonna be home and it's gonna be to where you'll be excited to talk about the new things that have come and that are coming forth. And when people come and visit, they can be excited about what's happening.